Welcome everyone. Developing psychometric models is the premises of this video that we'll be talking around it. I'll give you a brief idea about what psychometric model is all about it. A small example for, for you to understand what is a mental age and so on and so forth. So application of psychometric assessment, if you look into it, the picture that I've given out here, is it uh, oh, how many person can you see? Is it one person? Is it two person? Is person kissing at one another? Is it three persons perhaps? And how do you look into it? The models. The agenda is pro essentially giving you a background information on psychological assessment, domains thereof. The common instrument that we'll talk about it is the demand of this presentation and beyond which we will not be talking much. We'll help you inform consumers of psychological data in your future medical practices perhaps. Probably when I sit about medical practices, it is in a day in day life to understand the perspective of the other persons. So yes, we'll talk about psychological test. We are we will actually talk about intelligent test a lot. We'll talk about achievement personality and psychopathology thereby. Physiological assessment or psychological assessment is typical dri driven by particular problem or should I say the referral problem thereby. The purpose of assessment is to answer particular questions related to an individual intellectual, psychological, emotional, behavioral, psychosocial functioning or some combination of these demand domains as the case might be. How do we go ahead with it? If we need to understand, we will follow, follow it up. The referral generated in, in a setting may include everyone. When you, if you see there is something which has been won, I have jotted it, jotted this down from uh, Altamus Talman in 2030, in, which includes child defiance behavior, poor academic purpose, uh, performances, patient depression screen is positive, patient has complicated psychiatric history, Evaluate, determine psychological readiness to undergo surgical procedure. Let's say organ transplant, bariatric, amputation. How do we go around it? Now, these are the overview that came with an um, alt mallet and tailman in 2013 that tells you about the purpose altogether, about intelligence, achievement, personality, and psychopathology. Testing in context. Psychological testing is one of the components that comes around here. The assessment, the gather information from patients to patients obtain collateral informations when i say collateral information from different sources from adjoining sources in in a school it might be from guardians from uh, the school authorities from the parents of the child in, uh, in the office setting it can be your co-workers it can be your bosses it can be your juniors it can be your customers it can be your vendors so you need to understand administer that psychological test instrument test battery will look function in a number of different functional areas use this test have been standardized for a specific population within the context altogether and we need to understand this time and again interpret the result report will test the combined data as on when on basis this conceptualization should be summarized should be vibrantly available made available to every professionals out there and probably recommendations are supposed to be made Consequently, there are, it's not a full proof plan, you know, there are limitations. There are three limitations that comes around my, my knowledge. One, that is of biasness. The psychologist may selectively attend to behavior that are consistent with their expectation and often ignoring the other manifestation of their behavior. Preference and availability of certain instrument of which they are accustomed to work around it. So there is a serious sense of biasness. Then we have the patient factor. The second factor is all about motivation. You know, patients of such natures are moody. You do not know one of those days the person might be moody. The other day the mood might be completely different. So motivation remains um, a big, huge factor. Efforts on continuum, positive impression, management, optimal efforts passive cooperation, suboptimal efforts, and so on. Comfort with the testing situation. Probably people might not be confident enough, comfortable enough, and the responses will vary accordingly. So there are two things that I've already to told you. One of biasness, patient factors, and the third one is of assessment of diverse population. People coming from different walks of life had different principles, different cultures, different values, different ethos, and different education level. This actually influences the test validity of the test result may be attuned 
when instruments are used inappropriately cross culturally and stereotype threats comes happen i will talk about intelligence just for you to understand intelligence is ref often defined as the ability to understand probably concepts abstract concept reasons assimilate recall analyze organize information and meet the special needs of a new situation now, this is what intelligence is all about it is intelligence a single general ability or are there several distinct kind of intelligence pulse perhaps how do we go around it so we have the spearman constant co correlation test which is basically gives you understanding of the general cognitive ability the mental uh, age of the uh, of the person the cattle theories are all about fluidic intelligence capable to acquire new knowledge remember you have a certain degree of understanding probably an extrapolation to the understanding or should i say the application to your understanding is what we are talking about the new knowledge or can we do that can we solve the problems with that new knowledge is partially determined by the biological and genetic factor next is crystallized intelligence knowledge and learning gained over a period of time of a person's lifetime through an interaction between fluidic intelligence and environment and people in different environment will be reacting differently so that is what is crystallized intelligence is all about it so spearman coefficient factor is completely different and cattle's is of fluidic intelligence which is enhancement of the existing knowledge and application thereof and crystallizing intelligence is about one's own understanding of the life perspective situation and probably application thereof so intelligence what exactly is it all about it, it now iq is determined by a large extent by genetics yes it's the prevalent and accepted terminology and scientifically proven i'll just give you with an example in this uh, presentations also this video also the heritability of iq or the g has been documented in dozen of family twins now what i'm trying to stress upon here is the is the genetics that plays around here and i have i have just got it from mz's correlation of mz twins and dz's correlation for contrast everything so in 34 twin studies with the with a total of 4672 pairs of mz twins the average of mz correlation is 0.86 that's very high good one and then the identical two, two uh, twins are nearly similar to the same person twisted so the retest is approximately 0.9 hardly a difference in contrast the dc correlation is 0.6 in 41 studies with a total of 5546 of dc twins now these are not identical twins mind you remember so th this is where it changes so heritability of g seems uh, seems to increase with it genetic factors accounts for approximately 50 percent of the population level variations in intelligence by the end of first decade this proportion increased to 70 percent by late adolescence however poor nutrition and illness during development can negatively affect intelligent quotient is relatively stable throughout the life uh, g is one of the most reliable factors and stable behavioral traits in absence of brain pathology the individual iq is essential the same in the old age as in this as in childhood now i'll talk about uh simmons in early 1990s what about the chronological age and the mental age i would try to differentiate and hamper upon it so the audience of this video can understand what is a chronological age or genetic age or your physical age is all about it and the mental age as defined by alfred bennett way back in 1990s approximately 32 years from today um, a student with a mental age of 10 performed as well as an average age of 10 year old is a normative sample so if i can act my age think my age i'm normal person but iq ratio of mental age and chronological age is to be multiplied by 100 now this is where it is so if i am 10 years old 50 years old 90 years old and i act 10 years old even behave like 10 years old 50 years old 90 years old into 100 my mental age is absolutely good and strong as my chronological age the highest ca used to be in determined is 15 years altogether you you know chronological age that we talk around it so an iq of 100 means everybody is equal they are absolutely normal so let me give you a question 
A child is tested and found to have a mental age of 12. Mental age, M A is equal to 12. The child chronological age is 10. So the child is 10, but he or she is smart. So what is the mental age? Simple. It is 12 divided by 10 into 100. Probably yes. And that would be 120. 12 divided by 10 into 100. Why? Because the mental age is 12 years. The child actual age is 10 or chronological age is 10 times 100 as the case might be it is 120 similarly for iq range if you look into it the standard deviation is in the scope of 15 the average is around 90 to 109 the intellectual capabilities is more than the standard equation is what we talk about talk about it if iq is less than 70 and if an iq is more than 130 that is what we will be looking forward to as an as an expert profound and something like that so iq range normative age is approximately 90 to 109 borderline would be from 71 to 81 iq level mild would be at 50 to 60 that's approximately half your chronological age moderate is 35 to 55 severe you are severely hampered or there is an a cognitive disability in you in terms of 20 to 40 and profound is less than 20 percent so this is what comes around it giving you another example just for your understanding let's say a 12 year old child who is having difficulties in, in school is given an intelligence test a 12 year old this time not the 10 year old the test determined that the child is functioning at the level of mental age of eight years now if you look into it the child might be given a number of tests for eight years for nine years for 10 years for 11 years for 12 years for 13 years for 14 years but it seems that a child is competent and completely fluent when he or she is uh, positioning the eight year old test so what does it mean which category does it that, that does the child belongs to is it a severely intellectual disabled b moderately intellectually disabled c mildly intellectual disabled borderline or normative so the answer is very simple it's mildly i suppose Yes, mildly intellectual disability. Why? Because the mental age is 8 and the chronological age is 12. That means 66%, right? So that is what the IQ level for 50 to 70 is all about. It. So mild intellectual disability, the child can be coached and probably things can improve. The common intelligence test, the Weissestel Adult Intelligence Scale, the WIS, W-A-I-S-4, is the most commonly used intelligence test for older adolescents people can google it out it is there available online standardized sample of waisys 4 is approximately 2200 that's the standard sample size according to 2005 us citizen uh, census data and it is stratified according to age sex race ethnicity geographic location uh, educational level it gives the intelligence test from in children to the age from 6 to 16 and a half years of age the vessel uh, preschool primary scale intelligence is used to test intelligence for children to four to six and a half years of age similarly for stanford binet intelligence test the non-verbal test which can be all about your linguistic ability the iq test scores are less reliable for population that approach the extreme ends of the spectrum so talking about uh, wise for what do what do we talk about it the subjects can be as different as all about it and index description is also changing so subject under verbal comprehension would be vocabulary similarities and information so index description would be how competent how competent are you with languages linguistic abilities understanding obtaining through the informal process in terms of personal perceptual reasoning is the block designing matrix reasoning which vis, visual puzzles ability to interpret organize visual perceptions and to generate test hypothesis related to the problem solution then comes the indexes of working memory is of digit span arithmetic immediate memories ability to sustain attention concentrate and exert mental control we're talking about processing speed coding, symbol search, ability to process visual and perceive non-verbal information quickly with the concentrations and rapid eye-hand co coordination. And that is what processing speed would all be talking around it. So yes, we are talking about verbal comprehension, perceptual reasoning, working memory, processing speed, and what are the parameters that can go around it and the description, what are the manifestations that comes around there. 
So intellectual disabilities are of um, approximately three three criterias: uh, mild, moderate, severe, profound. Deficiency in intellectual functions, definitely yes. People who cannot comprehend the situation, understand the situation, interpret the situation, and probably come up with a wrong reaction. Deficit in adapting functioning is communication, social participation, and independent living. Prevalence of ID, worldwide prevalence is around less than 1%. Estimates vary between countries, income level. ID is approximately five times higher than that of males for the females, as the case might be. Adaptive behavior assessment, assessment of adaptive behavior is necessary for diagnosis of intellectual disability. Provides information about a person's strengths, weaknesses that can inform educational and intervention effort. Among the very large number of adaptive behavior skills on the market, very few have adequate norms and reliability to diagnose intellectual disability in people with IQs which is less than 70. Remember, so that is what we would love to go around here. We'll talk about Wineland adaptive behavior skills. What are we talking about it? The behavior skills in terms of communication understanding expressing written written doc, uh, uh, documents that's what communication is all about it the age range can be from birth to the until the age of 90 interviews parents caregiver teachers from wineland uh, three examines three domains communication daily living under daily living is all about personal domestic community how prevalent are you then comes the socialization process of interpersonal relation play and leisure coping skills a diagnosis of intellectual disability requires both an IQ score of 70 or below. Significant deficit in adaptive functioning scores two or more standard deviations then and there as on when on basis. Achievement tests are used to assess academic achievement. Example, evaluate how well an individual can be mastered. Achievement tests include scholastic aptitude test, SAT, medical college aptitude test, probably which is applicable in your federal, federal uh, state. In United States, the licensing uh, examination, your US mill is United States uh, licensing example. Uh, uh, licensing examination is all about it. The wide range achievement test, the DRAT, if you call it, is which is used to understand clinical, evaluate arithmetic, reading skills, and this is prevalent in a number of states out there. Learning disorders are all about H ability to achieve discrepancies as to understand once you have read it through understand can you comprehend can you come up with the just the synopsis part of it and that is what the lower academic or traditionally learning disability is all about it but this assumes the factors of negative effect on academic achievement and do not influence on that iq test specific learning disorders difficulties of learning and use of specific academic skills in certain learning domains let's say a person is suffering from dyslexia or word reading reading comprehension probably difficult or it gets registered in their brain a little late a wee late than the normal person would be doing about it did i speak about the uh, mental age and the chronological age that is what we are looking out here <laughs> Psychopathology in medical settings, probably the most common psychopathology is when you will encounter symptoms of depression, anxiety, and probably substance abuse. Evaluation of patients with emotional symptoms involves psychiatric history. It involves mental illness as the case might be. We are talking about sexual activities, the living situation and the sources of stress as the case might be yes mental status examination can be done can be administered and you will come to know about it how uh, cognitively strong or weak the person is all about it the data from personality testing and symptoms inventories would come up depression major depression major symptoms are common among the people in patients in medical setting Person demonstrated that 20% have high utilizations of medical care experiences, major depression, and major depression in partial remission. Objective rating skills of depression that are commonly used include Hamilton, Raskin, Zung, and Beck. In Hamilton and Raskin scales, the examiner rates the patient. In the Zung and the Beck scale, the patient himself or herself rates uh, rates 
for him or her. It's like a self appraisal that comes around it. Remember the back depression inventory too states approximately 21 items that's been listed out here as a depressive symptoms. Acceptance of psychometric qualities among the medical population, even in the minority population. This is what back depression inventory is all about it. The 21 qualities, if I, I am stating it out for your understanding is sadness, pessimism, sense of failure, loss of pleasure, guilt, expectation of punishment, dislike of self, self-blame, self-criticalness, suicidal ideation, episodes of crying, agitation, loss of interest, indecisiveness, worthlessness, loss of energy, sleep changes, irritability, appetite changes, concentration problem, fatigue, low level of sexual interest as the case might be and we are talking all about back depression 21 in 20 that has been mentioned and the anxiety skills the anxiety disorders are also highly prevalent in the medical settings and society several assessment method detect symptom let us talk about jad or cad do its generalized anxiety disorder scale seven or patient health questionnaire that comes around as ps as a phq form nine with this i come to an end of this presentation thank you for watching this video till the very end